Hey guys, Aaron Meyer here uh, with a quick um, video tip for Pro Tools users. Um, you know, I personally am always looking for ways to speed up my, my workflow and, and make things simpler and allow me to do things uh, more quickly. And I've been doing some work on a D command console recently. And if you've ever used one of these or any of the, the Avid consoles, um, you know there's a lot of functionality in there that that's designed specifically for speeding things up and, and allowing you to do things quickly and conveniently and, and um, a lot of times things that you can't do or at least can't do easily uh, with a keyboard and a mouse um, and one of those things that I that I personally have, have fallen in love with is a feature called uh, VCA spill and what this is is that it allows you to spill certain um, groupings of tracks down to the faders on the D command um, with just the click of a button. So, for example, if I just wanted to see all of my drum tracks across my faders, I, I click a button and there are my drum tracks. Um, if I just want to see all my vocals or even just my background vocals, I click a button and all of my background vocals are on the faders. Everything else in the session kind of goes away and I'm just looking at those faders. Um, and that's huge for me at least. Um, you know, from, from moving around quickly in a mix and, and, and accomplishing things, um, you know, as quickly as, as possible. And uh, one place where it really comes in handy is later in a mix when I'm, when I'm working on a lot of detail stuff. Um, it, you know, if you've got, you know, 50, 60, 70 tracks in a mix and you're trying to find one, you hear, you hear something in the mix that you want to tweak and you're scrolling through trying to find this one track out of 70 um, and then maybe on your way to that track you hear something else that you want to tweak and by the time you get to the track the first track you kind of forget what it was you were wanting to do you know, and it's just it's frustrating so um, having that spill capability of just being able to push a single button and get right where I want to be basically instantaneously is, is huge for me. So I, I started looking for a way because here at my personal studio, I don't have a, a console. I'm working with Pro Tools Native. You know, I, I have um, a couple of smaller format control surfaces, but nothing that's got that kind of functionality. So I started looking for a way to be able to kind of to replicate that result um, inside Pro Tools Native. And what I came up with was to use um, markers and if I flip over to my edit window you see you know we've got our typical markers that pretty much everybody uses for marking sections of a song or maybe you use it to mark certain selections or something like that um, but markers actually have quite a bit of functionality deeper in them that I don't think a lot of people ever really get to and it was one of those functions that allowed me to, to do what I'm about to show you. So um, <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is decide which tracks I want to see together. And typically, you know, as, at least when I'm starting out, I, you know, I make larger groups, um, but they, they're, they're basically common sense. Like I'll, I want to be able to see my vocals together. Uh, so we'll start there. So I've got a lead vocal, a background vocal, and then I've also got a vocal submix here that I want to be able to see and my masters because I always like to be able to see my masters in case I've got um, two bus processing or something here that I want to be able to open up and um, you know check how hard am I hitting the processor and um, you know whatever I want to adjust I can adjust from any view that I'm looking at at any time so we'll select those and then we're gonna go to show only selected tracks Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do now is hit the enter button to create a new memory location, and then I'm going to name this Vox View. Okay, and then under time properties, I'm going to hit none because I don't want this marker associated with with time in any way. It's it's not marking any particular part of the session. So, um, and then under general properties, I'm going to select track show hide. Okay, and then if I bring up my memory locations window you can see I've got a new marker here Vox view and this little eyeball right here indicates track show hide so that's the only property assigned to this 
Okay, so next I'm going to do an instruments view. And I'm going to include my bass in that, um, my acoustic guitars, banjo, dobro, fiddle, all of my instruments, uh, my instrument submix, and my masters. Now you can also break this down, and a lot of times I will as the mix progresses. Um, I'll break this down and add uh, additional groups for maybe just the acoustic guitars or maybe just the fiddles or you know whatever I've got going on. So um, I'm going to select those. I'm going to hit show only selected and create my marker location, my memory location. Time properties none. Track show hide selected and then OK. And if I bring up this memory locations window now, if I click on Vox View, you can see that I go straight to just my, my vocal tracks, my vocal submix, and my master. If I click Instruments View, I see all of my instrument tracks and my instrument submix and my masters. Let's keep moving. And this time we're going to work on the drums, create a drums view. And I also tend to, to include. Um, my bass with my drums because obviously a lot of times you're you're doing a balancing act between drums and bass in a mix so it's nice to be able to see that uh, see those together so I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to select my drum submix and my master show only selected create my memory location <clears throat> time properties none track show hide selected hit ok uh, let's do another one for my effects returns and then finally we will do one for all of our sub mixes because I like to be able to pull up my sub mixes um, quickly in case I want to you know route them for printing or uh, if I've got processing on uh, you know my sub mixes that I want to work with I want to be able to see those quickly so okay and then if I pull this up uh, you can see I, I can quickly move through all of these different uh, actually made a mistake here so let's go fix that let's uh, and this this is a good example because sometimes um, uh, sometimes things will get kind of messed up and it's it helps to know how to edit these because it is a little confusing um, on how to how to go in and modify one of these groups but let's um, let's select our effects again Our master show only. Then I'm not, then I'm going to come up here and click. Actually, what I usually do is right click since I'm on Windows. You may be able to control click on a Mac and then just hit OK, and then that should update it like that. Okay, and so now, I'm, as you can see, I'm able to flip through these all of these different views. You will have to pay attention because if you're adding aux tracks and, and um, things like that, as you add that kind of stuff throughout your mix, you'll need to add those to the view, which is, again, why it was helpful to, to, to be able to see how to edit those and, and update them. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave it as a comment, and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks.